My name is Edwin Ochoi. I always teach at the Regional Center of Management in partnership with the AFRI School, whereby we always provide online classes on uh, the papers tested by CASNEM, that is uh, CPA, CIFA, and other, and other courses which are provided uh, by CASNEM. So in extension, I also provide the uh, tax services and auditing services. So for today, I'm trying to talk about uh, the thing you are supposed to know under group accounting, which is uh, the common, common question in every city, whereby it's always tested uh, and having 20 marks. So if you can be able to score that 20 marks within the 36 minutes, because now every question is supposed to take 36 minutes, so you are on the better side of overcoming and getting a pass or an extension you will be given an award by those guys from CASNIM. So let's check a question which was tested in the previous past paper of group accounting so that I can show you a short term way of tackling a question of a group accounting in the shortest time period. So that is uh, November 2016. I'm going to check November 2016, question four. So when you go direct to that question, question four, so it's only that you are supposed to check the statement, if you are given income statement or a statement of financial posi position. So here now you are supposed to check if you are given what you are gi given. So that is the question. So here now the question, they say that the following information was extracted from the financial statements of A, B, C, and C for the year ended 30th, September 2016. So there I saw that there's A, B, C. So A, B, C, that is statement of financial position. Statement of financial position at your level, you know that it contains assets and liabilities. Don't read that one. Go to the additional information. Additional information is the one you are supposed to check. It reads, A acquired, its investment as shown below. We have the company, number of shares acquired, cost of investment, retained earnings, date of acquisition. So they acquired the number of shares, that is 16 and 3. 16, then we have 3. 16 shares are good here and the 3 shares. Then we have cost of investment. We have 480, 120. Then we have retained earnings, 150, 100. Date of acquisition there, we have 1st October 2014 and 1st October 2015. Then they say down there, A limited also invested in a half of 10% debenture or B limited. The fair value of the non-controlling interest in B limited amount into 120. Remember that if you are capable of interpreting the additional information, then everything is just simple. They are saying that A Limited also invested in a half of the 10% DB, debentures in B, in B Limited. So under this one, under this, I can show you something here. So remember here, we have the acquired the number of shares acquired in B and the number of shares acquired in C. We have 16 and 3. Then cost of investment there we have for 80, we have for 80, and we have 120. If we add them, we have zero, that is 600. So the 600 is supposed to add up to the investment which we have here. here. But the investment which we have here now is 700. So we are, but they are broken down and it's 600. So it's not agreeing by 100. That's why they have said that A limited also invested a limited also invested in a half of the 10% debentures of B limited. 10% debentures of B limited. So if I can check here the 10% debentures, the 10% deb debentures of B limited is 200. So 200, a half of 200, 200 times a half. That is a 100. That is the difference. 700 minus 600 is this one, uh, 100. So then they say, continuation, the fair value of non-controlling interest in B limited amounted to 120. So when you see this statement, it means that you will be doing goodwill using full, me full method. So goodwill you have to do using full method. Because already now the non-controlling interest is measured at its fair value. The number two, they say, immediately prior to the date of acquisition, B limited revalued its non-current asset in readiness for acquisition as shown below. So item, we have equipment and we have patents. Equipment is a long-term asset, which is tangible, and the patents is also a long-term asset, which is intangible. This is inter intangible. This is the intangible one. So I'm talking about patents. These are intangible, and this is the ta tangible. So we have the carrying amount, and we have the fair, va fair value. 
So the difference between carrying amount and fair value is called revaluation. So here we have a difference of 4, 40. The next we have a difference of 10, 10. 250 minus 290, 40. 150 minus 60, minus 160. That is 10, 10. Then you are given the remaining use for a life. So this is revaluation. Revaluation. The difference between the carrying amount and fair value. So you are given the remaining life so that you can be able to use them to get depreciation under charge. So here, depreciation under charge. So here now, remember that revaluation leads to depreciation uh, under charge. So if it's the first one, we have 40, you divide by with the number of years, that is 10. 10. So the first depreciation under charge is 4. Then now the next one is 10, you divide by 5. So that is a depreciation under charge of 2. So the thing you are supposed to know, revaluation leads to depreciation are under charge. Then they say equipment and patents are depreciated or amortized on the street rent basis over their remaining useful lives, respectively. Next, on the next side, the additional information continues. They say, during the year, a limited sold an uncurrent asset to be limited for 180. So there was a current asset. This is a tangible tangible asset which was so sold. That is a fixed tangible asset which was so sold. A limited marked up the equipment at 20% on cost. So remember that he sold A sold an non-current asset to B for 180. A marked up the equipment for 20% on cost. When you hear cost, that is markup. Eh? Markup. So here, remember that A sold to B for 180. So this asset had not been sold. At the end of the year, it has not been sold by B. So A sold to B. But now at the end of the year, there is nowhere they have mentioned that the plant was so sold. That is non current asset was sold. No, it was not sold. So we have to check the profit, which B never realized. So unrealized profit on fixed A asset. So we have to check unrealized profit on fixed A asset. The next, once you have the unrealized uh, profit on fixed assets, you will calculate the depreciation over charge because they continue saying that being included the equipment in its non current asset and the charge depreciation at the rate of 20% per hour uh, per annum on cost. The number four, they say that B limited sold inventory to A limited during the year for 150 million. B limited marked up these goods at 50 on co cost. So that is in the group sales. At the same time, it sold at a profit to B limited. That is on a markup. But at the end, half of these goods were still held in by A. So there's unrealized profit under A. Because now, B sold to A. A has not, uh, A received the goods. And A has not sold all the go goods. A half of these goods received from B are remaining. So we have to check now the profit which A never re realized out of the goods which are remaining. Five. A owed B 100 at the end of the year with regard to transaction in note 4 above. The books of A remitted, however, showed that it owed B remitted only 80 million. A remitted had sent check to B on 25th September 2016, which was not received by B remitted until 5th October 2016. So A owed B 100 million at the end of the year. So this is owing. So at the end of the year, we are saying that group members are not supposed to owe each other anything. That's why the balance which is owing, like now here, A was owing B100. But in the books of uh, A owed B100. But they say that in the books of A, however, showed that he owed B80. So it means that here, A to B, A owed B100. But in the, uh, in the books of it shows 80. So there's a difference of 20. So the correct intergroup owings is A, 80. 20 has been paid, but it's on tra transit. It's on tra transit. So I will subtract under the receivables, 80 minus 20. Then under the payables, I will subtract, uh, I will subtract that is 80. So, so that we cancel out the owings. No party is supposed to owe each other. Then 6, you say the group uses... Full goodwill method. However, it does not amortize goodwill. Instead, goodwill is assessed for impairment annually. So, impairment test for the end of the September 2016 revealed that none of the goodwill had suffered any impairment since acquisition. It's a very simple thing. So, once now you go to the computation very fast within the shortest time possible. 
So here I will just say the first thing you are supposed to know is the stru structure. So the structure we were not given. Eh? Remember that we were told that the number of shares acquired in A there was there was 16. So if you check under the statement of financial position, ordinary shares ordinary shares were 200, but per share was going at eh, 10. So was going at 10. So you divide and you get the share that is 20. You multiply with 100 percent. That's how you get the percentage. For B, we have the number of shares acquired in the three. Then in the statement, you are told that ordinary share capital, 100, per share is 10. So here we have 10. 10. You multiply with 100%. So this one is 30%. That is an associate. And this one is uh, the first one. I will say 16 divided by 20 times 100. That is 80%. Percent, percent. 80%. So A acquired... A acquired, that is, this was B, this was a C. Eh? So A acquired B and C. So he acquired uh, B and C 80%. He acquired here 30%, 30%. So he acquired A on 1st October, on 1st October. That is, he acquired B on that 1st October 2014. And C was acquired on 1st October 2015. 15. So that's all. When you go to the statement of financial position in a short way, I can say statement of financial position. I will be talking about PPE. So PPE, I will be adding 950 plus 750. I will add revaluation. So revaluation there of, remember PPE is all about property, plant, and equipment. These are tangible assets which are added together and recorded under the property, plant, and equipment. The revaluation was 40. The first one was 40. I will subtract. I will subtract. So the 40, they have said under note 2. Under note 2. Already I showed you when I was trying to explain this. So that is 40. Then I will subtract depreciation under charge. So depreciation under charge, that is 40 divided by the 10 year. 10 years, that is 4. That is 4. Then I will subtract UPFA. UPFA, you will just use your call to get that UPFA. Because they are saying that during the year, A sold non-current asset to B for 180. Eh? He sold to 1A, 180. Marked up the equipment at 20% on cost. So remember that now you change that one to margin. 20% is like 20 over 100. But the margin is 20 over 120. That is ta 30. So I will subtract here ta 30. Then I will add back. I will add back. So this is a UPFA. In order to UPFA, that is a transfer value of 180 multiplied by the ma margin. Because markup, we have 20 over 100. So the margin is 20 over 120. 20 over 120. Then now they say that B included the equipment in its non current assets and the charge depreciation at the rate of 20%. So I will multiply charge directly 20%. 20%. So here I have C, 6. And that's the only thing you are supposed to add the charge under PPE. Next, I will move to investment. So investments, investments, investments is supposed to be investments in subsidiaries replaced by go goodwill. That one, just like, write goodwill, then just write wa working. Then we have investment in this associate. This is an a associate. The investment in associate is supposed to be replaced by investment in a associate supposed to be investment in associate but here now you use equity me equity method equity me method is 28 is 28 28 the next we talk about intangible assets so intangible assets first you do the poster boss intangible assets 200 plus 150 plus the revaluation plus the revaluation of 10 10 revaluation of 10 then i will subtract I would subtract, I would subtract the amortization undercharge. Amortization undercharge, that is 10 over 5 times, 10 over 5, it was 10 over 5, eh? 10 over 5, that is 2. So under that one is 2, 10 over the 5 years. So remember, I'm done with non-current uh, assets. So this was non-current uh, assets. Then I will talk about current assets. So the current assets, current assets, I will talk about inventory inventories so the inventories i will take 250 plus 250 plus 200 eh? 
to 50 plus 200, I will subtract UPS. So UPS on this question was under note 4. They said that B sold inventories to A during the year for one fee, 150. B marked up the goods at 50% on cost. So half of these goods are still held by A. So terms are half. So that we can get the goods that are remaining. That is a half. Times the margin. That is 50 over 1 fee. 150. That is 25. 25. So that's how you are supposed to do these things. When time is not on your side. Or in your exam period. In your exam period, remember. You owe against time. So that is trade receivables to 20. I will add 170. I will subtract owings. Owings, I said that they are 80. Minus the cash in transit of 20. The next I will be talking about financial. Financial assets. Financial assets at fair, va fair value. So financial assets at fair value. I will be talking about 180 plus 130. That's all. Cash. I talk about cash and bank balance. So cash and bank balance. Cash and the bank balance. So cash and bank balance, cash and bank balance, I will say 100 plus 50, I will add 20, this cash in tra transit. Then now, up to that point, I have the total A assets. So the next thing is all about recording equity and liabilities. Equity and liabilities, equity and liabilities, which is the second last thing I will be recording here. So ordinary share capital, ordinary share capital capital. So the ordinary share capital, that is you take for the parent only. Then we have share premium, share pre, share premium, parent only. Share premium, that is parent only, 200. The next I would be recording retained earnings, if the needs are working. Next thing you have to introduce NCI share. Remember NCI share? The parent never controlled, the parent never controlled the subsidiary into 100%. So that one needs wa working. So up to here I will write shareholders fa shareholders fund. Shareholders fa fund. Then the next thing I will talk about non current. Non current. Non current liabilities. So under the non current liabilities, non current liabilities, I will talk about the ten percent debate debentures. The ten percent debate debentures. So the ten percent debentures is six hundred. I will add with 200, but I have to minus the 100 whereby they invested in B according to addition information number one. They say that A Limited also invested in a half of the 10% B debentures. Then the next thing I will be talking about deferred tax, DT, that is 250 plus a 100. Then now the last thing, the last thing is current liabilities, current liabilities, the current liabilities. So the current liabilities, the first current liabilities, trade pay payables. The trade pay payables. The trade payables is 300, 300 plus 250. Then I will subtract owings of A, 80. So that no party will owe each other. I can continue on the other side. The remaining two. So the remaining two under the, tra under the current liabilities, the next thing is current, uh, current tax. So the current tax, current tax, that is 250 plus 150, 150. Then the next thing is proposed dividends. Proposed di dividends. Proposed di dividends. So the proposed dividends is 100 plus 100 plus 100. And that's now you would say total equity and liability. Equity and liabilities. Equity and liability. So here is 200, 100 plus 100, that is 250 plus 150, that is uh, 400. Then here, 300 plus 250 minus 80, that is 470. Then 800 minus this one is 700. Then the next one here, this one is uh, 130, uh, that is 170, not 130, 170. Then this one is 180 plus 130, that is 310. Then the next one there is 220 plus 170 minus 80 minus 20, that is 
290. Then up there, 200 plus 150 plus 10 minus 2. That is 350, eh? 358. Then this one needs a working, and the good we need a working. Then 950 plus 750 plus 40 minus 4 minus 30 plus 6. That is 17, 12. So up to this point, without any working, you have how many marks? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So they were asking how many marks? 20 marks. So up to this point, without any working, so you have how many marks? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So without working, you have 11 out of 20. In your exam situation, I advise you when you are a student, just go and do the working, maybe the working of goodwill, investment in associate, goodwill, this one goodwill, investment in associate, and do NCI share. Retained earnings, you will find that 5% of the students will score in that sitting. Because now goodwill, either you use full method or a partial method. Like now in this question, they were in need of, we use full method. Because now we already have the fair value of non-controlling E, interest. So we use the full method. Full method is whereby the goodwill. Goodwill is attributable to the parent, is attributable to the parent, and the non-controlling E, interest. Whereby goodwill is... Purchase consideration, you subtract the share of net assets acqu acquired. Then, investment in associates. We'll be talking about the investment in uh, associate. So the investment in associate, you use equity method, whereby the associate is initially recognized that cost. You add share post acquisition profit, then you subtract impairment loss. So that's all about uh, the short illustration of the November 2016 question on group accounting never forget to join our classes for every saturday at our free school at 10 a.m for a comprehensive computation on the relevant questions which are tested by casnet thank you